Hi everyone, it's Carl from the Information Lab here. Now if you know me and my Tableau background, you may have seen me talk about parameters. And actually, parameters are just so powerful, but there's a few really sneaky things that you can do with them that actually not a lot of people know about. So I thought I'd share some of those tips here. First of all, why do we use parameters? Well, let's look at orders over time. Let's use our right click to draw our order date onto column, just our normal SuperSaw data, so which comes with Tableau if you want to follow along. And let's just select our continuous month. If a user, for example, wants to look at sales, great. You produce the report that they actually want to see. But actually, I don't know about you, but I've always found that users and report users want to analyze different things. Profit, unit price, just drop that correctly, whatever that may be. Now, there's quite a lot going on there. So how do we make that, first of all, easy for a user to do and actually just make sure that they can do that and see that? Well, I like to use a string parameter. I know it's not everyone's favorite due to computational speed, but it gives us some real power in helping the user understand how they're doing it and what they can do with it. So let's create that parameter. I actually create parameters by creating the calculated field first. So here we can create the calculated field. There's a few sneaky pieces within this. So here I'm going to call my measure select a value. Now there's a real kind of sneak, sneaky trick even here. If you produce a lot of parameters, you want to pair up the parameter with the values it's driving. Give them consistent names. Here I want to talk about a measure selector parameter, so I'm actually going to call the calculated field that's generated off the back of that the value, hence the name measure selector value. Let's start our logical statement, but we can't use our parameter yet because we haven't created it. Tableau hides many things in plain sight. In this example, there's actually the ability to create the parameter in the calculated field, which quite a lot of people miss. So as I've already mentioned, let's call this our measure selector. And I'm going to create this as a string. As I mentioned, it gives us some functionality that I'll show off in a minute. So let's do our example of sales, profit, and unit price. Let's do them all as averages. So average sales, average profit, and average unit price. Now, it might seem strange that I'm displaying my name as the average, but that's not what I've got on my left-hand side, which, again, you see quite a lot of people do. Well, whatever goes into your value drives your parameter. Tableau is case-specific. It would have to be identical, or it would error, and you, that's when you actually get a, a lot of blanks being used within a parameter. So I keep it really simple by just using 1, 2, and 3. Let's OK that, and let's see how I build that into the calculation. So now I've got my measure selector here as a parameter. I can double click. You'll see it's purple. That's the sign it's a parameter. And actually, let's build the calculation that allows us to see what we're doing. So let's double click again. Use all of Tableau's time saving capability. Enter our average sales, because that was our first metric. Just for neatness, get rid of that space. Again, measure selector. This time equals to 2. It's a string, so we need to use the inverted commas. Speech marks are also fine. Tableau doesn't mind which one's which. This time, let's do our average profit. And what we can do is actually we can copy and paste. Use all of those possible shortcuts. Just remember to change your value. And change our metric to unit price. Tableau is still not saying well, we're, our logical correct, statement's correct, and that's because we just need to end valid. Just as a quick check, again, another sneaky hint, which I only found out this week, is actually you've got the ability to edit your parameter after you've created it here. And actually, that comes in really handy, because I can now read across between my parameter dialog box and my calculated field, see that, yes, one should drive average sales, two should drive profit, and three should drive unit price. Excellent. So we've got those. Now, the way to actually remember building a parameter and actually utilizing it is build the parameter, done. Second step, show that parameter. So right click on the parameter and show it. Third step, build the calculation. We've got that. 
and then show the calculation or use the calculation in the view. So let's go and drop that in. Now we can see that we've got average sales, average profit, average unit price. And the user's got the ability to select that. But quite often, how we actually build things is in a dashboard. It's not actually just within a worksheet. And that's how we show it on the server or Tableau Public, whatever your choice is. Well, there's some sneaky design elements that are well worth considering when building something in. So let's just create a little blank box within there just to add a little bit of white space so it helps you to see what's going on. And what would I do to make this a little bit easier? Well, first of all, why don't we make it really clear and change the title of our parameter to be clear and an instruction to tell somebody that they can actually do something. So select the measure you want to analyze. Give a hint that there's some action there by using our three dots after and just, just make it pop out a little bit and use orange. Excellent. So now that kind of jumps off the page of I can actually see I've got an instruction here. And as I change, well, I'm changing my metrics, but I'm not seeing the axis change. Lots of people in ta uh, who use Tableau don't think this is possible, but this is why I use a screen string parameter. I can actually draw that out, place it on the row shelf, and we see that as I change my parameter, I'm changing the name of the axis. Well, actually, the axis title isn't changing. It's just the fact that I put my parameter in there as a label, which is what a dimension is and we're making that clearer. So now we just clean that off to actually show that as we change our parameter, we're changing that title. It makes it cleaner and easier, and if somebody's printing out this um, worksheet or capturing it as an image, that's being carried across too. Let's just tidy this up and remove our row names. But sheet one, we could give it a name like measure analyzer. It doesn't really make too much sense. Well, actually, again, because we're using parameters, we can embed that. So let's call this our um, parameter name. Oh, pick the value. My mistake. Our parameter name by month. Now what's happening is, as I change my parameter, you're getting this really big visual clue around what I'm actually looking at. And that's a really easy way to make parameters work for a user to help them with self-serve reporting, but also to prevent mistakes with what they're actually looking at. Obviously, you can build out your dashboard. You can have the parameter drive multiple values and multiple charting elements and obviously clean up the dashboard a lot more to give titles and descriptions and legends. But that's just some of the real hints around how to get the most out of your parameter and make it as easy as possible for your user to get the benefits. Hope that was useful.